interval level four. Four, four, yeah. What's going on, guys? The Inhuman Beatdown, and I am back with more Fate Stay Night. Last time, our crew did the unthinkable. They uh, did the impossible, beat the unbeatable, row, row, fight the power. They took down Berserker, not without uh, some uh, power magic. Shiro recreated Excalibur, that was the thing. Or, Exca or Calibur, and I couldn't tell. I think it was Excalibur, whatever. Point was, Berserker went down. Hard. So did Shiro. <laughs> or did they walk back? I think they said they walked back. Yeah, alright. Anyways, the sky is thin. It is, is it dawn or dusk? As I am watching from outside, I cannot tell. A vast sky in a high field. A sky that seems unreachable even with, the, uh, with arms outstretched. And clouds that do seem reachable with arms outstretched. This is a battle she once went through. There are no cavalry alongside. The grassland, once golden as far as the eye could see, is gone. Under the dark gray sky, the only thing that's stretching out is... The remains of battle, which she is well accustomed to. There is no emotion. For her, such scenes must have been ordinary. There is nothing left in her lonely heart. Leaning on her golden sword, she breathes deeply once and slowly relaxes her shoulders. The battle must be over. After glancing at the bodies of the defeated soldiers, she returns to her camp. That was the battle she experienced. The calm attitude is the same as now. No matter what trouble she's in, she is just as I know her. And in that way, I see the dream of a king. From the moment she drew the sword from the stone, she was not human. After becoming a feudal lord like her father, she became a king with many knights. She was called King Arthur, or Arturia. Or Arthuria, depending on how you look. Japan's real weird when it comes to translating her name. So it's like, it's written as Arturia, but it's sometimes pronounced Arthuria and written Arthuria. So I don't really know which translation to go with. So for now, I'll just go with whichever one's written. I guess right now it's officially localized as Arturia, because that's how it is in Fate Stella. But anyways. And the girl who had tried to become a knight had her life turned around. She acted as the son of the king. That is because the one to govern many territories and control the knights had to be male. And the only ones who knew that the king was just a girl were her father and the magus. Merlin! <laughs> she literally covered herself in steel and sealed the truth for all her life. Of course, it's not like no one grew suspicious of her. But the King of Knights with the Holy Sword will not suffer wounds or age. Excalibur bears the protection of the fairies, making its pros pro possessor, I don't know why I was trying to put an R in there, immortal. Therefore, nobody questioned the knight's small body, and the face that seemed like that of a girl became honored by the knights as a good-looking king. Of course, such things were not a problem. The king was truly invincible. Is that why she died? <laughs> there was no room for body size, nor looks to enter into it. The people living in fear of savage invasions wanted a strong king, and the knights of the battlefield would only follow an excellent commander. The king met all of these criteria, and so, no one questioned who the king was. It doesn't matter if the king is a child or a woman. The only point is that it must function as the king to protect the country. The new king was fair and selfless and always stood in front of the army, defeating enemies on the battlefield. Many enemies and many people died, but the king's choices were always correct and she served as the king better than anyone else. There was no doubt and no need for doubt while the king was right. Knowing no loss on the battlefield, her army reconstructed the now lost cavalry and literally ran through the battlefield defeating foreign infantries and crashing through numerous ramparts. 
Was she always in the front of the army because her country was behind her? She had to discard many people to join battle. As long as she joined battle, she had, she had to defeat all her enemies. It was normal practice to meet military needs by sucking everything out of the local village for the battle to protect the country. In that regard, there could not be any knights that killed more people than her. I do not know if she ever found that a burden. That is not something I can tell from a dream. But there is no doubt in her figure, running through the battlefield. She does not even narrow her eyes in grief when she sits on the throne. A king is not human. One cannot protect the people with human emotions. She kept that oath strictly. She settled every problem and worked hard in government affairs. She balanced the country without any deviations and punished people without a single mistake. And after ending yet another battle in victory, commanding the people without disorder and punishing hundreds of criminals, King Arthur does not understand human feelings. A knight close to her murmured. Perhaps everyone felt that way. The more perfect she becomes as the king, the more they question her as a ruler. A person without human emotion cannot rule over others. Several reputable knights left Camelot, but the king took it as a natural event and accepted it as part of the process of government. Thus, the fair king honored by her knights isolated herself. But such trivial things are of no concern to a king. Her mind will not change even if she is abandoned, feared, or betrayed. There's no right or wrong. She abandoned her emotions from the moment she decided to pull out the sword. And in that way, her final battle began. The battle at Baden Hill. Ugh. Ended in complete victory. And because of the overwhelming results, the savages sought a re recon reconciliation. The country that would have just awaited destruction earned a brief period of rest, peace, whatever. The chaos that demand demanded an absolute hero has ended. I will, I, I promise I'm, I'll get these words right eventually. Britain is finally returning to the country she has dreamed of. Until now, when they isolated themselves from Europe, but uh, whatever. <laughs> the scene starts to fade away. Somewhere in my head, I realize that I'm waking up, and the dream is ending. I will lose consciousness and wake up soon. But before that, something really annoys me. She's stupid. Certainly, she must have been strong and good at fighting. But that doesn't mean she's well suited for it. I'm also angry at the people around her. If she didn't notice it, someone else around her had to tell her, or she'd keep making the same mistake forever. Jeez. She had so many people around her, so why did none of them tell her the truth? Oh, look, I'm back home and not dead. I wake up. We escaped Ilya's forest and came back to this house yesterday afternoon. Tosca went back to her room saying that the wound in her stomach was hurting, and I also wanted to go to sleep since my headache was still around. It must also have been because I carried something heavy all the way here. When I got to my room and lay down, I couldn't even get back up. Saber was the only one unhurt, so Tosca and I went to sleep, letting her keep watch over the house and... I slept half the day, huh? <sighs> At least it seems my headache is gone now. I'm relieved. The thing with Berserk, the thing with Berserker, the headache that started when I duplicated Saber's sword was terrible. If that headache continued, my head would have broken before my body did. Wait. Huh? Huh? There we go. Saber is sitting Japanese style beside my futon. Saber. Why the sad face? Did something happen while I was asleep? Oh my god, is the house on fire? <laughs> no, I just had a dream. Perhaps the same dream we did? No, it is nothing important. Let us eat breakfast, Shiro. It is almost time to get up. Saber gets up and leaves the room quietly. 
I don't know why Saber's acting so weird. I mean, we didn't just, like, fuck a day ago out of convenience and nothing awkward between us But after that. Nope. I don't know, but... I guess she was nursing me since she was sitting by my futon. Oh, thank God. I was about to say, you're gonna make me fucking censor another episode? Come on! Don't do this to me! We're past that now. As soon as I think so, I recall the scene I really shouldn't remember. No. What am I thinking? Don't think about it. I shake my head and clear the thoughts out of my head. Um, I did it with Saber because I'm her master. <laughs> oh, that doesn't... I know what he's trying to say, but man, that really doesn't sound like... I did it with them because I'm their master. I have absolute rights. That's how you get this girl. It kind of sounds if you take it in that direction. Ugh. Anyways. I have to think like that or I won't be able to look at her properly. Yeah, have fun with that. And the situation was that bad. And Tosuka did it too. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This won't end if I start being conscious of Tosuka too. Stay calm. Stay calm. We were acting normal on our way home yesterday. That should be fine. Well, no, I was just too tired yesterday, but stay calm anyways. First of all, Saber will be troubled if I act like this. Alright, I have to calm down and go make breakfast. I take a deep breath and start changing. It's 9 in the morning. I wish it was 9 in the afternoon. Insert song here. Saber must be really hungry as we haven't eaten since yesterday afternoon. I mean, technically, didn't they say, like, servants don't need food? I guess? I don't remember. I guess you can't call it morning now that it's past 9. I, you could. It's still technically not afternoon. What's in between morning and afternoon? <laughs> Anyways. Considering Saber, I'll make a fairly large meal. Shiro, we are the only ones this morning. Should we not wake up Ren? Wake Ren up? Whatever. No. They should sleep, right? It was a hard day yesterday, so there's no need to wake them up. Why do you keep referring to Ren with plural... With plural na... With uh, plural nouns. They can eat whenever they want to if we leave their meals out. I see. Then it will be helpful if you can start preparing soon. It is already late. I know. I feel well, so let's get to the dojo after the meal. <laughs> what? Go to the dojo? Are you still going to continue your training? Why not? It's a daily routine, right? What's wrong, Saber? Did I say something strange? Uh... No, um, I selfishly thought that you were done with your training. I thought there was no reason for you to be so desperate now that Berserker is defeated. Yeah, God forbid we still don't know about, uh, Assassin, Caster. Who's the other? Lancer! Lancer, that was it. I was like, who's the other one that's still alive? <laughs> I see. When you put it like that, you may be right. Tosuka and Saber and I, our common enemy, is now gone. Though, I don't see our truce pack ending anytime soon, seeing as how Archer's kind of, you know, dead. We cooperated because we were targeted by an enemy superior to us, and that's why I trained as well. But we'll continue our training. I'm still inexperienced, and you're honest when you hold your sword. That's a big help for me when I talk to you. Well, when I say it's a help, I mean it's fun. I am honest in the dojo? You are. At least you're not hesitant. That's better for me and I think it's relaxing for you as well. Anyways, fighting with you is my daily routine. Don't take away the few pleasures I have. <laughs> pleasures with Saber. Moving on. 
I take ground beef, ground beef and pork, mushroom, onion, and eggs out of the refrigerator and head to the kitchen. I'll also need breadcrumbs, alcohol, salad oil, and... In that case, I have no objections. Saber murmurs something in the living room. I'm already in the kitchen, so I unfortunately couldn't hear her. I start mixing. Mm. I mix onion, breadcrumbs, alcohol, egg, and salt, and put it in with the beef and pork. I've decided to cook Japanese-style hamburger for breakfast. Ren, have you awoken? I can hear Saber's voice from the living room. Tosaka. I turn around while cooking. Morning. Sorry, let me have some milk, Shiro. Tosca comes over with an unhappy face and takes some milk out of the refrigerator. Gah, my head hurts from sleeping too much. Hey, you sure are putting a lot of effort into breakfast. Where did that bad mood from earlier go? Tosca Ren's eyes gleam as soon as she turns to me. Wow, that looks good. I'm hungry, so that's really helpful. I see. But you're the one that benefits, not me. That must be what my father said. For someone to benefit, someone must lose. I thought so for a while, but you're pretty sharp. Oh, I'm only normally witted, wit witted. So prepare some for me, too. Waving her hand, Tosca returns to the living room. With a glass of milk in one hand, she takes position at the table. No. Should I say she's really relaxing or acting like royalty? <laughs> well, that's that's random. You are acting quite lazily, Ren. All right. Way to go, Saber. She sure is good at saying difficult things. But... Tusco waves off Saber's criticism lazily like she doesn't care. Of course I'm getting lazy. Now that Berserker is gone, all that's left are Caster, Lancer, and Assassin, right? They aren't much compared to Berserker, and they can easily be fought off in Saber's present condition. Uh, especially Caster, considering, uh... What is it? Uh, Saber classes have... Or, Saber... Yeah, Saber classes... I'm not sure if just her in particular. Has Magic Resistance. Uh, cancels any magic below A rank. I'm pretty sure, like, she could still hurt her. Like, uh... Saber could hurt herself. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I'm sure Caster could probably hurt Saber, but I, w I, I honestly went and bank my money on it. Under normal circumstances. Anyways. I do not know. Lancer's master is still a mystery. An assassin is not an enemy that can be defeated by ordinary methods. Neither was fucking Berserker. What's your point? And we have not even met Caster yet. Don't be modest. A normal hero is an easy opponent for King Arthur, right? You were grieving because you didn't have enough magical energy, but that's all... <laughs> Every time they bring that up, I'm never not gonna laugh at it. But that's solved now. There's no servant now that can match you, Saber. Saber narrows her eyes at Tosika's words. I feel the same way. The thing Tosuka just said can't be ignored lightly. Tosuka, you knew who Saber was? Vaguely. I only confirmed it yesterday. There's only one hero who can use such a holy sword. Well, I was surprised that the legendary King Arthur is a girl, but if the real thing is in front of me, all I can do is believe it. I mean, yeah? This is where Grand Order kind of starts to contradict itself. As Grand Order has summoned a variety of different versions of characters. So, and I mean, technically they've already confirmed that fake prototype King Arthur. Well, I guess that's also because it's supposed to be based... It's hard. It's hard keeping up with this. Is she really a girl? Is that how, like, the history is actually written? Is the is the fake prototype King Arthur actually the King Arthur? Is that just the one based upon the myth? I don't know. Dude, it's tough. It, it's hard. It, it's hard keeping up with all this shit. 
And then you get really weird shit where you just throw it in. I'm looking at you, Lancer Alter. <laughs> Anyways. For those who don't know what I'm referring to, originally before Fate's Day Night, there was Fate Prototype. It, ori it originally had a male King Arthur with a female protagonist. They originally flip-flopped the genders to make it sell better for a male audience. So yeah. But in actual Fate Prototype, King Arthur was actually a dude. And Grand Order just fucking summons whoever the hell they goddamn want at any time, whether it makes sense or not. And then they just pass it off as, oh yeah, this is the common conception of this mythical hero. That's, that's, that's how we do it. At least that's how they've done it with like, what is it? Jack the Ripper. There's like a version that's a little girl that I don't understand. That's supposed to be like, oh yeah, this is actually who Jack the Ripper was. And then there's a version in another Fate series. I think it's one of the novels. And I honestly don't remember which one. And it's like, oh yeah, it's this mysterious shadow assassin thing. And this is supposed to be like the the myth of Jack the Ripper. And a, a, a shadowy assassin that no one has ever seen. He has no face or features. Kind of thing. It's uh, weird. It's hard to explain to newcomers all that. Just because it's like, okay, here's all this, 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 this. Wait, wait, stop. What? Anyways. And legends usually are conveniently altered, right? I don't know if Saber hit it or the people around her hit it, but it certainly wasn't convenient for a girl to be a king in the medieval times. That is true. Of course they treat her as a man. Those guys the same tone of voice as always. Saber doesn't seem to care that much either. Why should she? It's her history. Saber rather seems to be agreeing with Tosca's opinion and shows no sign of denying anything. Again, why would she? She lived it. So she has clearly admitted that it's true. A hero related to swords is chosen for the servant Saber. From that perspective, she is certainly the best Saber there could be. Eh, I don't know. Pretty sure there are some other better Sabers. Most popular in the Fate universe. Yes, most definitely. Actually the best? Eh, you know, your mileage may vary. The great hero of England. The bearer of the holy sword that everybody, even in this distant country, has heard of. But if that's the case, then what? The end of the legend of King Arthur ends with the king's death. No. They are still human even though they are heroes. It's only natural for their last moments to end in death. But no hero dies normally. King Arthur was no exception. I remember that the end of King Arthur was in a war. The Great Battle of Camelon. Having unified Britain and with no outside enemies to defeat, King Arthur faced an unexpected enemy in the end. Mordred, the bastard son of King Arthur. Given birth by Morgan Le Fay, I think is how it went. Which really, I want to know how that makes sense in uh, Fate's universe. Because it's like it makes sense for the Arthurian mythologies where like Morgan kind of like seduced uh, King Arthur or whatever, or used magic or whatever, to conceive Mordred. But it's like, how does that work? Yeah, with yeah, with uh, Saber or like Arthur being a girl in here. And let's not even get on to the fact that Mordred is also a girl because God forbid we got to keep that gender bending streak alive. <laughs> no girl left ungender bended. Anyways, moving on. The enemy was her was her own army that she protected. Because of a betrayal by the one she trusted, King Arthur was attacked by the knight she had fought with. And it was said that the king had to defeat them. King Arthur succeeded in defeating the enemy leader, but took a fatal wound in the process. She entrusted her only surviving knight, Sir Bedivere, I think that's how you pronounce their name, with the return of the Holy Sword. Go past this bloody battlefield and the hill. There should be a lake there. Throw this sword into that lake. But Bedivere could not follow the order. Fearing the loss of the sword, Bedivere gave a false report. The first and the second time, saying that he had thrown the sword into the lake. Every time, King Arthur would order Bedivere to throw the sword away, and the order was followed on the third trip. And it was said that King Arthur died after ascertaining that the holy sword had been returned. But anyway, what are we going to do now, Shiro? And then, Tosca suddenly glares at me. Um... About what now? 
about that dangerous child who's asleep right now. You're the one who brought her here even though I told you to leave her behind. I would like to comment on that as well. Even though she has lost Berserker, Ilias feels a dangerous master. It is not a wise decision to protect her now. Yeah, you can just leave her in Kyrie's care. Uh, so I guess we brought Ilya back? The two judge this, uh, judge this a good time and glare at me together. That's right. Ilya fainted after Berserker disappeared. I couldn't just leave her be since she showed no sign of waking up, so I brought her here. Tosca and Saber objected, so I was the one who carried her. A master who loses their servant has to run away or go to the church for protection before they're killed by other masters. Tosca says we should let Konamine take care of her, but I'm letting her sleep in a room here since I don't think he would take very good care of her. Shiro, your thoughts are honorable, but it is dangerous to associate yourself with Iliasville. You still have time. You must let the church take care of her or remove her command spell. Saber glares at me. Uh, she's serious. Convincing her will be really difficult. We couldn't just leave her. I mean, you could have, but... Ilya's still a child, and she was acting strangely too. And I'd feel sorry just leaving her in Kodomine's care. Feel sorry? How can you say that after what she did to us? That is also a very fair point. She is just the little bitch that did try to murder you by means of a giant behemoth. I agree. You feel too much empathy for Iliasville. She tried to kill you many times. The two are even more united now. But I can't let them talk me out of it. Ilya was certainly our enemy, but she didn't have any malice. Ilya won't do that sort of thing again if there's someone there to tell her what's right. And I think I said this at the beginning. I'm not fighting to kill other masters. I'm just fighting to end this war. Because war... Oh, never mind. War never changes unless it's interrupted. I know that, but... Saber doesn't agree, but her voice softens. But... I see. Then you're saying you'll forgive everything Iliasville did. I'm sure you know she attacked other masters as well. She might have killed several masters already. You're saying you'll save her in spite of that? We do know she did kill Shinji, which honestly is for the better. That's... Um, that's right. Ilya admitted it. She killed Shinji. God bless her. Shinji used Ryder to try and kill the students at the school. If those were his intentions as a master, I guess his death couldn't be helped. Oh, uh, it, it sounds real nonchalant like that, like, I guess his death couldn't be helped. Oh well. <laughs> but still, Shinji is a friend I've known for years, and thinking about his sister Sakura, I can't forgive anything Ilya did. I can! Sakura's better off without Shinji. But then, there would be no end to it. If Ilya isn't a master, and if she can't regret what she did, I think we should save her. Can regret what she did, whatever. Yeah, that's right. But Shiro, I have no intention of forgiving her for Archer. She killed my Archer. Everybody freezes. We freeze looking at each other. And... And what? We'll find out next time. So until then, I will catch you all later. Asta. I need a drink. These longer episodes are starting to kill me. Hey guys, thanks for watching this episode of Fate Stay Night. If you've liked this episode, be sure to leave it a like and share it with all of your friends. And to stay up to date with all my latest content, please hit the subscribe button. Now it's time to go out into this mysterious world, craft our magic, and summon our servant, and prepare for the oncoming war. So until next time guys, I'll catch you all later. Asta.